Could you please do a quick demo of how to utilize merchant words to discover profitable products? I, well, um, I don't use merchant words to, not really anyway, to discover profitable products. I use merchant words to validate product ideas. And there's a difference between those two things, of course. So, however, um, there is a few ways that you can, you can discover ideas for products on merchant words and then use merchant words to validate those product ideas. So let me show you uh, an easy one. Where are we? Oh, we've got rent to Natasha. Let's buy some of the stuff on Natasha's Amazon account. She'd love me for that, no doubt. Mm. Let's do that. So uh, one thing you can do on merchant words is something called an ASIN lookup. So uh, let's do an ASIN lookup. Da, da, da. So you've got a few different things you can do here. Da, 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 da. As you can see, all those. But let's just do the ASIN lookup, OK? <coughs> oh, logged out. Logged myself back in. Mm -mm -mm. So Merchant Words has moved towards making the single user thing. So now when any of my outsourcers use Merchant Words, if they're using it at the same time as me, I get logged out or they get logged out, which is a complete pain in the ass. But it is what it is. I'm supposed to be on their beta. Hello, George Lawrence, if you're listening, you bastard. I'm supposed to be on their beta for multiple entries into it. But so far, that has not been the case. All right. So here we are, I've just done an ASIN lookup. Here's what I've got. So now what I'm looking at is all of the search terms that that product, that ASIN, ranks for, or as we call it, is indexed for in Amazon. Okay, that's what an ASIN lookup is. And a reverse ASIN lookup, it simply means what has Amazon decided your product ought to be linked to in terms of search words or phrases. That's all that, that means. So let's have a look. So now I'm going to look at reviews on page because that's one easy thing to look at. Just looking at the number of reviews on a page can give us some infra interesting ideas about po potential opportunities. Because if I see a page that's got low numbers of reviews, um, then that probably means I can go into that search term, find the products with the low number of reviews, and usurp them in the search engine results page. Now, if that makes sweet FA sense, allow me to demonstrate. Baby pool float. Here, look. Infant pool float. Here, look, swim ring. Here, look. So they've all got like 9,000, 8,000, 11,000 results. 8,000 results, 4,000 results, 2,000 results. So let's just have a quick look at this. Infant pool float, okay? So let's just check this little thing here just to see what the, what the data actually tells us. So this just allows us to drill down a little bit more. So I can see the high price on that page $55. So I know that that's, there's a spread now between $6 cheap as chips and $55 for a reasonable quality or high quality with the average price being 23 bucks. So I like that spread because what that spread tells me is I can place my product at the top of that spread, $55 and still and still there's somebody on the first page, which means they must be making sales. They must be making sales if you're on the first page. Star rating 4.1, reviews, 30 listings. All right, let's go take a look. So we can search here on Amazon. Let's just open up in Amazon. Oops. So infant pool float. There are 2,000 results, which is actually not many. And now I'm just going to look at the search results page. 
So let's see who's ranking, who's doing what. So that's got 89 reviews, 106 reviews. 27 reviews. Well, that's pretty easy to beat. I can definitely get more than 27 reviews for a product. Uh, what else have we got? Um, 70 reviews, 94 reviews, 74, 26 reviews, and low review count. So that's interesting. That's a product that will open up because that's an easy one for us to beat. Okay. Now, here's what, okay, I should give you a little bit more thinking. So, what I'm thinking now is here's a product that's on page one for a search term result, which means it must be making sales. That's important that you understand that. It must be making sales. But the product itself has got poor reviews. So it's, not, it's only got three star reviews. So it is this, there are some parents who like the idea of giving their kids this toy like that, exactly like that, the little car. It's a cool idea. And they will still buy the product even though it's got shitty reviews. So all I'm thinking is, all I'd need to do is fix the product, i.e. make sure it doesn't get the shitty reviews, list my product, and I can kick that product out of the way and replace it with my better product. That's my thinking, okay? Pretty easy to do. And they've even sponsored it as well, which is crazy to do that. So they're even running paid advertising on it. Here's one with 20 reviews. And again, piss poor, very, very crap. Eight reviews, 55 bucks. Cool idea though, don't you reckon? With a little sunshade on it. I like that. That could have some legs to be doing other things on. Anyway, let's go back in here. Have a look at this. All right. So. First thing we notice is this listing actually is not compliant because uh, that that is against Amazon's terms of service. So that's we can instantly do better there. We can definitely beat this review percentage of three-star reviews. We can put the price up to something more reasonable. Let's find out why it gets bad reviews. Top reviewers. So what's our one-star reviews? Why is it getting one-star reviews? I wouldn't buy this. So it's poorly made. The horn pulled right out. Poorly made. Had a hole in it. Not very sturdy. Well, that doesn't really mean anything. Poor quality. Poor quality. It tore after second use and leans back. So poor quality. So all of their poor reviews are based on poor quality. So all that means is you then go to the factory that makes it and say, can you do the same thing but with higher quality plastic or whatever it's made out of, a thicker gauge of material? That's all you'd need to do in that situation. Dead easy to fix that problem. And because you're not trying to create something from new, all you're looking to do is use a better quality of material that's made in it, that's an easy fix. That's an easy fix. So that's how I use Merchant Words. Dead, dead easy. You could do that with anything, of course, but that's how I use it. Hey, thanks so much for watching that video, and I hope that you got some massive value from it. Before you go, do you live in Australia? If you do, this is for you. Would you like to learn how to sell things on Amazon here in Australia? Would you like to know what sells really, really well and what sells for the maximum amount of profit? Would you like to know where you can source those products from, whether that be in China or here in Australia, and how to source them so you pay bottom, bottom dollar and get maximum value for what you're doing. If you do, please subscribe to my channel and like this video and you'll learn that and much, much more. It's the exact same information that people like Jeff from New South Wales I've used to make $45,000 a month on Amazon that Sue, who's from the sunny coast, has used to purchase herself a brand spankly BMW every single year as a result of her e-commerce business. And the lovely Kate from Barrel in New South Wales has used to make $32,000 a year on, uh, sorry, a month, not a year, a month on Amazon. And indeed, Anthony, who makes $15,000 a month on Amazon, selling, as he puts it, 
odds and sods. If you'd like to learn the exact same inf information that they use to maximize their profits for their Amazon businesses, subscribe to this video, like my channel, and post below if you want me to teach you something. Okay, I'm out of here. Speak to you soon. Bye. Subscribe. Subscribe. Do it now.